Hey everyone, it's Rob Linton here from drumsaword.com. Today I want to give you something a little bit special. I want to give you a full song lesson for free. You can download the full PDF for this drum chart as well. There's a link beneath this video, so you might want to have that printed out while I go through this song. I've had loads of requests for this band. Um, I like This is my favourite song of theirs. Um, uh, it was mostly requested over on Facebook, so if you're interested, go over the, to my Facebook page, link beneath here, and add your own suggestions as well. It's Gold on the Ceiling by the Black Keys, drums by Patrick Carney. This song is superb for beginners. It's kind of like a bluesy kind of shuffle feel, which um, it, it's, it's quite rare to find a song a drummer can play that's modern, that has that sort of bluesy kind of feel to it. So this is a great song for learning that, but not only that, it's just also got some really cool drum beats, really simple stuff going on, but rock solid. So let's start. We've got the tempo is 128 BPM, and I've written for the first three bars, we've just got the intro basically, we've just got the guitar coming in. And be aware that it's actually just three bars of guitar intro. The tempo is this one, two, three, four. So just basically three bars of this guitar one, two, three, four, and then we're in with the drum beat. So be aware of that it's like a, a shorter intro than you'd be expecting. But if you learn the guitar riff, then you'll know when to come in. I've written under, uh, um, underneath that, or on top of those three bars, which you'll see if you print out the chart, important, all eighth notes are swung throughout song. So I'm gonna give you plenty of examples of this. Let's go straight to the first drum beat, and I can show you an example of that. So the first, uh, second line of the chart, chorus one, I've written in brackets, loose hi-hat, so we're playing our right hand on the loose hi-hat, and I've written note underneath it, I've chosen to transcribe the hi-hat hi pattern Patrick plays live on the recording, I believe he just plays quarter notes. So let me explain that and let me get this out of the way straight, straight away. I hope you don't think I'm being mean, I'm just trying to be honest with you and explain a few things. Let's be honest, Patrick Carney isn't the greatest technical drummer in the world. He's obviously still quite new to the arts. Um, he's rock solid timing, no doubt about that, and you don't have to be an amazing drummer to play great music and to play in great bands. It's just he's obviously not that new at it, and he looks like he struggles a few times, and he makes a few mistakes live, bless him. But um, uh, on the recording, you can't really hear the shuffle pattern. When you see him play it live, you can sort of see how he struggles with it. Um, how a lot of beginner drummers, including myself, would struggle with the shuffle pattern. We'll get on to what that is in a second. So um, on the recording, the hi-hat is really low in the mix. You can hardly hear it. In fact, it sounds like he's crashing on the crash cymbal, just playing quarter notes. So I'll give you an example of the drum beat we can play later on using that simplified quarter note version as well. But realize that when he's playing it live, he's playing the shuffle pattern on the open hi-hat and struggling a little bit. If you find the same, and I'll show you some alternatives for that later on. So first of all, the drum beat as written, if I was to play it straight and not swung, then it would sound like this. We're playing one and two and three and four and with the hi-hat over the top. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Which doesn't sound like the drum beat, because it's not, it's not swung. If we were to swing it, it would sound like this. Not. I see what I mean about the difference between straight and swung. If I put in a metronome, let's just choose a random temp uh, tempo, 100 BPM, what's that going to be like? Okay, so if I was playing the straight drum beat, one and two and three and four and. Now notice when I play it swung, the tempo's not going to change, it just changes the feel. It's just, I can't really hear the kick very well in my head, so that's my excuse for going out of time then. The tempo didn't change, well, my drumming did, but you know what I mean. It went from straight to swung, and the difference between the two is just the notation being used. We're either playing in eighth notes or playing in eighth note triplets. Now, as this is a beginner lesson, I don't want to go too much into that. In fact, I don't think I'll go into that at all. Um, that's something that you learn later on. It's not important when you first start playing, you understand what that means. What's important, though, is you hear the difference between The shuffle rhythm uses this rhythm. Let's get down to the, the, the sort of, let's boil it down. It's basically this rhythm. I like to count it one and two and three and four. It has a swung lilt. It's not evenly spaced notes. There's two that are quite close to each other. And you can see it one, two, three, four, and one and two and three and four and one and two. That's the shuffle rhythm. And that's the feel that we go throughout this entire song with. 
So going back to the drum beat, I've already shown you how to play it really. We're just playing on the loose hi-hat and we got, you've got to get comfortable playing this drum beat because this is the main drum beat of the song. Now, a lot of beginner drummers will, will find that quite difficult, especially with that right hand pattern. As you'll see, Patrick play live, he struggled with that right hand pattern. So, a way around it is just to simply play quarter notes instead. So, instead of playing one and two, we just play one, two, three, four. But then we've got a bit of independence to go with it because um, the bass drum and snare drum pattern isn't going to be following the right hand exactly. So, we get this instead. Let me close the hi hat so it's a little bit quieter so you can hear just the snare drum and bass drum. This is your alternative drum beat. And if you're completely beat at this, you'll want to sort of play. It'll feel weird for you trying to get that feel initially, but just practice with it. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a great song for learning that sort of shuffle bluesy kind of feel uh, on the drum kit. So, do bear with it, it's really worth learning because there are loads of songs out there that require this feel. Um, so it's well worth your time. So let's go on then. So uh, just a bit to finalise that point though, there's your quarter note version if you want to play that instead. Instead of the shuffle version, but I recommend. And I guess I didn't mention it, all the notes there are falling with the right hand. It's just about getting the feel. Once you've got the feel, lining up the hand isn't as difficult as this. But your right hand isn't playing as much. So it's up to you how you play it. Both will sound cool, by the way. As long as that bass drum and snare drum is always shuffled, it doesn't really matter what you play on the hi-hat. Okay, I think I've made that point enough now. So let's go on. We've got the first two lines of chorus one exactly the same. We've just got four bars of that drum beat going on. There's a crash on beat one of the first bar of the chorus. The second line, notice that there is no crash on beat one. If I was playing this live with my band, I certainly would put a crash there. I can't hear it on the recording, so I haven't put it on the chart, but I'm sure, including Patrick, he'd probably play a crash cymbal there. Excuse me, hickey pups. God, that sounded weird. Um, notes underneath on the third line. Notes, tambourine can be played, or sorry, tambourine can be heard playing the swung hi-hat pattern below. So, um, on the third line, on the recording, you start to hear the tambourine go <laughs> which is actually replicating the right hand pattern you should be playing on the hi-hat. But be aware that tambourine is on the background. If you've got a tambourine on your drum kit, by the way, set up, you might want to play the shuffle rhythm on the tambourine instead of the open hi-hat. That means when you go to the choruses and go on the crash, it's going to give it more power because you've got the tambourine and then you've got the heavy crash rather than the heavy hi-hat and then the heavy crash. Um, I thought I'd just sort of throw that in there. So the tambourine in the background is actually the, the shuffle pattern being played. But the drum beat stays the same. We're just continuing to play. It's just that tambourine's been added over the top. Let's go on then to the next line, which is verse one, which I've called verse one. Loose hi-hat. So you can see the first bar, we've got a break. So from the line above, going from the drum beat into that first line of the verse one, we close the hi-hat. It's, again, it's going back to the recording. If I was playing it, I'd probably play a bass drum and hi-hat together, together on beat one. But Patrick doesn't on the recording. You just hear the hi-hat close on its own on beat one uh, and no bass drum. So one and two and three and four and one. And then we just continue to count. One, two, three, four, one. Another three bars or two bars of rest. And then the last bar, we come in with the bass drum just before the snare drum. So it's the same shuffle pattern from the drum beat, it's just we're missing out the first half of the bar. So we get one, two, three, and four, and, and notice how there's no hi-hat being played there. One, two, three, and four, and, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and, then it goes on to the next section. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and, and notice how this next section doesn't have any hi-hat. So again, I'm referring to the, the, the recording, I've watched them play it live a couple of times when I was um, transcribing this, and Patrick doesn't do this. He, he basically rides on the hi-hat pretty much all the way through the song, or the crash or ride cymbal. 
Um, but on the recording, you get this, this sort of laid back, um, a quieter section for the drums where it's just the bass drum and snare drum you can hear. You can't hear any cymbals at all. So that's why we got this on the chart. Up to you whether you want to play that live or not um, when it comes down to it. But we're just basically playing the same rhythm just without the hi-hats. Oh. Then we go on that bar, by the way, that bar is played four times. Boom, boom, bap, bap, boom, boom, bap, bap. Play four more times. And then the next line of verse one, the last line of verse one, we go back to the hi-hat. So the hi-hat's reintroduced. And notice how we've got a crash cymbal on beat one of bar one, bar two, and on bar three. And by the way, a little, a little um, bit of advice or trick or um, observation is a lot of drummers, when they've got a crash cymbal, um, they don't automatically rush back to the hi-hat to play the very next note. I've written on the chart, you can see there's actually a hi-hat note on the and of beat one following the crash cymbal. That's just because if, if, if you wanted to, it would be cool to do it. But most drummers don't need to because a crash cymbal washes out, it's quite loud, you've got plenty of time, this is what I do, to come back to the hi-hat and start the hi-hat pattern on beat two. Don't worry about rushing back to the hi-hat on the and of one, you can come back on beat two instead. So instead of the playing You can play so I just simply moved back to the hi-hat on beat two and not the and of one um, which gave me just that little bit more time I play up to speed and then as written you can't really hear the difference it's just a little bit harder for me to play it that way so I choose to play a bigger gap between the crash cymbal and then going back to the hi-hat. Again, that crash cymbal is going to wash out, no one's going to hear the missing notes. So that's a little bit of a tip there. We've got the crash cymbal on beat one of those first three bars. Feel free to come back to the hi-hat on beat two. And then the fourth bar, we haven't got a crash on beat one, so just be aware of that as well. Then we go on to the next section, uh, and it's called I've called it the bridge, bridge one, and I've written in brackets crash cymbal. Now this could be the ride cymbal he's riding on, uh, instead of the crash cymbal. If you've only got one cymbal, and it's probably going to be a ride cymbal, and obviously ride on the ride. It's up to you though. I, like, I just like riding on crashes when you've got these heavy sections. I don't think the ride cymbal sounds um, crashy enough, because it's ridey, not crashy. So I like to use the crash when I've got these heavier sections. So that's what I'm going to play it on. Up to you though, whether you play ride cymbal, heavy wash, or a crash cymbal. We've basically got what I suggested earlier for the simplified drum beat. Um, we've got um, quarter notes being played. So the first bar, we've got a two bar pattern that gets repeated. The first bar, we've still got the shuffled bass drum underneath. Any notes that fall on the end of, it, of, of any part of the bar are gonna feel a little bit wee. So we've got one and two, three and four. I'm hearing on my head, da, 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 one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. So notice again, oh, well, this will be the last time I mention it, it's not, it's this. I hope you can hear the subtle difference there with the bass drum. So that's the first bar, then the second bar, the two bar pattern is just even simpler, or sim very simple, it's just quarter notes. One, two, three, four. So notice there that when you haven't got anything being played on the and, you couldn't tell that was a shuffled rhythm. If I just play this for you, You wouldn't know it was shuffled and start, until I started adding in extra notes. So, okay, so we've got that two bar pattern. One and two, three and four. One, two, three, four. One and two, three and four. One, two, three, four. Nice and simple. The last line is exactly the same, except for the very last bar where, um, Patrick just ends the bar on beat one of that four, fourth bar. So bars three and four of that, of that last line. One and two, three and four. One, two, three, four. Simple as that. You just hit one and then you wait for the rest of the bar. So before we go on, this is what I do for all my lessons. I will now play this up to speed for you so we can hear how we go from section to section. Now all this, a lot of page one is sort of repeated bars, so I'm not going to play the whole page for you, there's no need. I'm going to start where I've written notes, tambourine can be played, uh, can, can be heard playing the swung hi-hat pattern below. The third line of chorus one, all the way through verse one, 
all three lines of it, and then all the way through the bridge into the second page as well. So you can hear how you go from section to section without a microphone on, so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. So the rest of the song is pretty much plain sailing because the first page contains all of the sections you really need to know. So as we go on to page two, we've got chorus two, loose hi-hats, back to our hi-hat shuffle rhythm or quarter, depending on what you chose. Because there's a crash cymbal on beat one of bar one of each line. So it starts with a crash cymbal, you hear it on the recording. At the beginning of each line. And then we might as well go on to guitar solo one our first guitar solo of the song, and guess what? The drum beat just continues. So we just have a crash cymbal on beat one at the beginning of the guitar solo, and then eight bars of that drum beat. So let's move on. Verse two, we've got the loose hi-hat, I've written in brackets. Notice how the first line is the same as the second line from verse one. On the recording anyway, all I can hear um, uh, Patrick play is just the bass drum snare drum. But I've noticed that this time that when you go from the end of guitar solo one into verse two, you've got to close the hi-hat. Um, so that's what the little plus sign is above the first note of verse two. That plus sign is where you close the hi-hat because remember it's been open from the bar before. We've gone from. So you can see how I went one and two and three and four and one and one. I closed the hi-hat there on the first note so the hi-hat closes. One and two. Then the drum beat just continues for the rest of that line. Second line of verse two, the hi-hat is reintroduced. The third line, we've got another break. Again, the hi-hat is going to close on beat one on its own. That's what I hear on the recording. Um, of, so we get from... And it rests for the rest of the bar. And then we come in with the most complicated drum. I've got to stop doing that. I hate people that do that. We come across the most complicated part of the song. The, the one drum fill that's a little bit different. And it comes in on beat two. One, two, and. Ignore the open hi-hat for now. We're just playing this rhythm. And by the way, you can leave it out if you wanted to. It's very low in the mix. No one's going to miss it. We've got this rhythm. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And that's the sticking I suggest you use as well. Left, right, left. But you could just play one, and two, and three, and four, and. Your, your left hand is strong enough, or should be strong enough, to play at this tempo those notes with one hand. But it just feels nice for me. So we get one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and, and that open hi-hat on the end of two, one, and two, and, and he just, he just leaves it to, to ring out for the whole of the bar. One, two, and three, and four, and, one, two, and three, and four, and, it's not very loud, sorry about that. One, two, one, two, three, and four. And I've got to hear that part of the hi-hat to activate it properly. So um, we then go into bridge two for the next section. So going from that drum fill, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. We're into our bridge again, same as bridge one. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. Same two bar pattern being played. So very similar to the part I just played. Oh, by the way, bridge two is exactly the same as bridge one. It even ends on beat one of the fourth bar. So it could sound very similar, but let, let, just, just for complete sake, let me now play for you um, verse two, all three lines of that, plus two lines of bridge two before we go on to page three. Here we go.
Okay, so then we got chorus three on page three. Um, and just look out for crash cymbals on beat one of the first uh, bars of each line. That's what you gotta look out for. Guitar solo two, there's one crash cymbal at the beginning and then it's just the drum beat. Bridge three, guess what? It's exactly the same as the previous bridges. And chorus four, yep, you guessed it. It's just the drum beat being played all the way to the end. So we got four lines of that drum beat, uh, 16 bars in total, a crash cymbal at the beginning of each line. Um, and then the song ends, you can see the very last line of the chart. We've got the four bars at the bottom and then the fifth bar is just hi-hat and bass drum um, coming down together uh, to end the song where the hi-hat closes. One and two and three and four and one. So you do hear a bass drum at that point at the very end of the song. And that's how it ends. One, two, three, four. One, two, and that's it basically. And that really is it. So it's quite a simple song to explain and, and, uh, and um, to understand, but to actually play that feel thing, you're gonna struggle with it if you're a complete beginner, so don't be disheartened by that. It is gonna happen. I found shuffle rhythms kind of weird to sell off with as well. Um, it's just a feel thing. There's nothing complicated going on. It's just getting that right. Hearing that lilt, that jazz feel. Although don't get puffed by the fact I just said it was jazz. It's not jazz, it's shuffle, it's, it's swing music, it's, it's got a bluesy kind of feel to it, which is what jazz is. Um, okay, so uh, if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com. I'd really like you to come over and say hello to me on my Facebook page. Just type in Drums the Word on Facebook and you'll find me. There's also a link beneath this video. I give away loads of stuff on Facebook these days. Free charts, loads of competitions, uh, and I try to keep my posts relevant to drumming as much as possible. So if you want to come over and say hello, that'd be great. I'm also on Twitter as well. Don't forget you can download this drum chart for this lesson for free. It's on my website. There's a link beneath it. So please print it out and enjoy this lesson. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up, give me a share and a comment and all that good social media stuff. Until next time, toodle pip, happy drumming to you.